So welcome to my allotment. Today I'm going to be harvesting a few of my lovely goodies. So if you've not already subscribed to my channel, if you could please do so, because you'll get lots of helpful hints and tips all throughout the year from my home garden, my allotment, and also my home kitchen. Now it's the beginning of June, and I've got lovely things that I can harvest at the moment. So the thing that I've got the most of, as you can see, I've got absolutely loads of artichokes. So I'm going to take off the biggest ones first and then I'm going to work out what I'm going to do with them when I get them home. So, as you can see, they look quite lovely. I had quite a lot of black fly on them, but I just rubbed them down. I had my gloves on and just rubbed them off, and they don't seem to have come back. So that's a really good way of, of getting rid of the black fly if you've got any on your artichokes. So I'm going to take the bigger ones. I've already printed a few recipes off, and I'm going to have a go at doing um, some. I have cooked artichokes in the past, but I'm not going to lie, they're not something that I'm that confident with. So if anyone out there has got some really awesome recipes, I'd love to know. I've got a couple of recipes I've done before. I've done stuffed ones. Um, I've actually found some that if you cook them when they're a little bit smaller, they don't form the choke in the middle. And I've got some really good recipes to roast them as well. Um, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna give that a go. So I've got a selection that I'm gonna try, but any tried and tested and super easy recipes, I'd love to know. And there we go. They are incredibly easy to grow, I will say that. I've had them a few years, um, and it's something that does pretty much just grow like a weed, a bit like the other artichoke um, that you can get. So, the Jerusalem artichoke, and obviously this is the globe artichoke. So, there we go, I think that will do me to get me started. The other thing I've got is some lovely rhubarb. So I'm gonna take some of this home and cook with it there's lots of things you can do with this and everyone always just assumes that you only just stew it you know you can actually pickle it and um, it's really good with mackerel if you've never pulled your rhubarb before I mean obviously I do it quite naturally because I've been doing it for a while but you actually take it right from the root and um, so you almost twist it as you pull it you kind of twist it from the bottom so that you don't um like that kind of broke but so you actually take the whole bit out you're actually pulling it right out from its socket as it were um, and if you if you don't do that, um, then it you know it won't be good for the plant. So you do need to take it right out from the base. It seems a little bit brutal, but that's exactly what you want to do. So I think one more stalk will do me. If you did just want to stew it, um, just with honey and um, juice from from an orange is really really lovely. Just baked in the oven, nothing fancy. So there we go. I've got a lovely um, bit of rhubarb there. So I usually just twist the tops off and put them on the composter, like that, and it fits nice and neatly into my basket. So I'd love to know what everyone else is harvesting. I have got salad at home, so I'm already harvesting um, cut and come again lettuces. I've got rocket at home. Um, I keep that, the early stuff at home, just because it's a little bit more sheltered and it comes on a little bit quicker. So I've already got a few bits that I'm enjoying, which is absolutely fantastic. And I foraged some lovely elderflowers the other week and made a lovely cordial and a lovely sparkling champagne as well. So it's not just things you grow in your garden, there are lots of things that grow wild as well, which you can, you can use. So as we move down, the gooseberries are looking absolutely fantastic. Now, I can harvest these um, if I want to. I'm not gonna harvest them today, but as you can see, they're absolutely fantastic. If you've got um, gooseberries, then obviously do, do cover them because the birds will have them if you don't, or they will do here if, if I don't. Um, you can leave them on longer and they sweeten up more. Um, I will get them off at some point in June, just not today. So the other really exciting thing that I'm harvesting today is my garlic. Now, all depending when you planted your car garlic will depend whether it's ready or not. If I'm honest, it's been a, it's early a little bit uh, ready a little bit earlier than normal actually and um, but mine went in in october so mine is ready quite early um but if you can't see the tops of your garlic then just gently because some years i can't see the tops for some reason they're showing a lot more this year but if i couldn't see the top of my garlic then so you just ease your fork into the ground and gently lift it out but obviously mine are looking you know i can see quite easily you know, it is a bit of a a bit of an art knowing when to dig your garlic because if you dig it too soon, um, the bulbs won't form. And if you leave it in too long, then they can rot in the ground. 
so you have to these have only just really gone brown so um you know last week there was still quite a lot of green on those um so the, these are definitely ready and what i'll do is you can eat them as wet garlic so you can cook them straight away they've not got such a strong flavor or you can dry them which is probably what i will do with most of mine i will lift all these today and i will dry them on a rack in my summer house on a nice day i'll bring it out onto my pathway at home um, but i generally keep them in my summer house just to you know i don't really want the rain raining all over it when i'm trying to dry it out and my wooden summer house is just kind of seems like the perfect um way of drying them it just works really really well um, i'm sure it being in a wood environment it always seems like it improves the flavor actually um, so there we go lots of lovely garlic there i'll dig the rest of that up later if we move over i could take a few of my kale leaves as you can see that's looking quite good so they're looking fantastic and the um, enviro mesh is doing a really really good job there protecting all my kale from the elements and from any birds or butterflies that want to try and have their two pennies. Now I'd love to know what you're harvesting at the moment, um, what's what's working for you and what you're what you're getting at the moment. And if you've got any questions, um, as usual, please do put them in the comments and we'll do our best to answer them.